I'm Margaret Bryony and I'm going to tell you about my life making art. I began as Margaret Brown and then became Margaret Smith, both of which bored me greatly. But at the stage when I was Margaret Brown, I began my education at the Ladies College Cheltenham. And this was not a very happy experience, mainly because I was a left-handed child. My mother and my grandmother had also been left-handed, it runs in the family. And unfortunately, I got a teacher, my first teacher, who was not going to stand for this. My mother discovered this when I was, she found me drawing in my room, and as soon as I saw her coming in, I started saying, don't hit me, don't hit me. And so she went down to the school to complain. And she got to see the teacher and explain the problem. And the teacher replied, I have taught all my life. It was at the beginning of the war, so she was in retirement. And she said, I'm not, and I've never had a left-handed child in my class and I'm not having one now. So I'm afraid she didn't put up with me being left-handed and I was forced to be right-handed, which I now am, though I could still draw with my left hand, but I cannot control a pencil with it because I have never practised. However, the drawing was something innate, I just had to do it. And I went on drawing non-stop all over everything like most children do, my father's books, etc. And this I began to do obviously rather well, rather early. I could draw rather better than my mother. And I could draw things I saw like current fashions and so forth remarkably well. And this went on for a while and I got out of the Ladies College Cheltenham I went to Pate's Grammar School instead, where the great attraction for me was that outside there was a big rose garden which had been given a lot of chalk to improve the roses and I discovered I could pick up lumps of chalk and, and draw on the pavement so I then spent most of my time in recreation drawing on the pavements. This was not popular but I enjoyed it and it made education considerably more bearable. And then after that Again, because at the end of the war, we moved back to London and I went to an elementary school in, uh, in Felton Heath, a very good one too, and they got me into a grammar school. At the grammar school, I was very fortunate immediately to find a teacher who was a very good artist indeed, highly qualified, and she immediately noticed that I could draw and began to encourage me. Miss Wrightson was her name, Miss Isabel Wrightson, and she taught me things like painting on vellum and trying to put uh, uh, colours and, and things like gold on it and all that. Made birthday card, Christmas cards for the governors and all this. And I was enjoying this greatly, but then she suddenly was retired. And when I came back to school, I had a new art teacher who actually never seemed to me to teach art at all. She did do potato presses, but that was all. Or she painted the school scenery big and large and lumpen. She never taught me anything and she never spoke to me. For the next five years she never said a word to me. She took whatever I did in the studio and she put it away and that was the end of that and I got more and more discouraged and allowed myself to be encouraged to go to Oxford and to do all the study for it and got a scholarship. On the last day at school however she came up to me and said what are you doing when you leave? And I said I'm going to Oxford and she said oh I always thought you'd get a scholarship to the Slade. And at this point, I was stunned and I said, but why didn't you tell me? And she didn't say a word, she just walked away. And I think this was one of the biggest betrayals in teaching you could possibly have had. Uh, but anyway, I went to Oxford and there I was most unhappy. I did not fit. I tried very hard, very hard indeed, but I did not fit and I did not feel I had anything in common with my fellow and fellow students. What I wanted to talk about they thought was rather odd. And they also noticed that I was drawing when I should be doing other things exactly. And it didn't really work out well. And I didn't enjoy the experience and I did badly, something which my parents never forgave me. So I was pretty miserable and discouraged and I stopped doing any drawing, I stopped doing anything. I became a librarian and many years passed and nothing happened until finally I got a stray cat, a very beautiful stray cat, this one, and she 
used to greet me every evening when I came in. I was not enjoying life, but I thought I'd love to draw you. So I sat down and I drew the cat every evening. It was a lovely, peaceful thing to do. And I've got hundreds of drawings of that cat. And at this point, all of a sudden, my desire to draw began to burgeon again because of this activity. I am entirely grateful to the cat. Yeah. In order to show you the kind of things when I started drawing again, drawing the cat, I brought one of my sketchbooks. And uh, you may or may not be able to see it all the right way up or not, it doesn't matter. But it just shows you I had infinite numbers of drawings of cats and I did them in every conceivable material. Uh, you know, in ink, pen and ink, in charcoal, in, in pen, in everything else you can think of and indeed pastels. And I've got so many, I don't know what to do with them. But it was something that was a continuing exercise and it reanimated my desire to draw. I felt that I just couldn't stop after a while, but I felt I had to spread out into greater things. But the using of the charcoal reminded me that first meeting with charcoal was about 10. And I happened, very uh, fortunately, to be given some sticks of charcoal and some tissue paper and told to use them. And I went to the next door house where they had a riding horse and the owner held the horse for me and asked me to draw its portrait, which I did in charcoal. And it was remarkably successful. I still have a portrait of that horse. I wish I could give it to him now. And I'm most grateful. But I took immediately to this absolutely difficult medium, especially on a different, on a difficult piece of paper. It really didn't work well for most people, but I just liked it immediately. And then I started drawing other things. I drew the cat so much for 14 years that I must have at least 500 good sketches of cats. You can see round here. And in fact, I then began to feel that maybe it was a bit confining. And this dawned on me particularly when I was trying just different techniques of inks and uh, and crayons and all those things like that, I didn't have any colour. And then it just so happened that I went to the big Blake uh, Museum, which was on in the Tate in 1980. And this was a revelation to me, Blake's books in particular. I was fascinated by the technique, the colour, and the fact that the images could in fact be expanded to any size and still have an impact. And I thought, if he can make a book, I could make a book. Why don't I make a book? So I just came home and decided to make a book. And this is the result. And, sorry, here it begins and you will see for the first time colour. And if I go through it, you'll see more colour and you'll see me departing from all the things I've ever done. I've started to spread over the page. I've started to draw vegetables and Christianalia and food and everything around me in the house, not just cats. And I bet this went on and on. These, for example, are just the little punnets that strawberries came in at that time. I found drawing them rewarding because I like drawing and that those lines and perspectives appeal to me a lot. And yes, and the food was very rewarding. I particularly enjoy doing those. And uh, you will notice I put in the shadows which came into my room. I was sitting on the bed drawing at a small table as women throughout the country and throughout the world have always done when making art. They don't have the facilities, they usually use the dining room table, and so did I, which was a small one. And on I went. And I just enjoyed it for its own sake. I realised I could enjoy painting. I hadn't been painting before, and I was using a brush for all this and watercolours. And gradually all kinds of fantasies came into it. Uh, yes. All this I'll just go through, try and find something. No, 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 not that. There's some of these pages aren't finished. I didn't ever finish the book, unfortunately, but it's pretty big. And it went on and on and on. 
and I drew other objects in my room, as you can see, bells and candlesticks and keys and all the rest, and everything around me. And life got more interesting all the time. More cats, and fundamentally, well, it just went on. I just turn over the pages as I go. Um, yes, and the food of the time. <coughs> For instance, uh, I had never tasted some of the fruit I put in here. Things I'd never eaten before I put in. Yes, more fruit. And you will see at least one jug where the spout is actually opposite the handle. Because I dreamt that in a dream and I drew it that way. So I'm really departing from what is actually in front of me. And becoming more imaginative. And, yes. Then I started enjoying the fruit, some of which I'd never, I'd never eaten, for example, one of those in my life and I put it in. And this began to develop and give me great pleasure, especially the colour, which I'd never used before. And on and on I go. Even handbags, everything around me I drew. And this went on. And in a way, no longer did I feel that cats were the only thing in the world you could draw. I stopped drawing cats, largely. I had about 500 pictures and that was quite enough, I thought. And the dog, anyway, the cat died eventually, very sadly. She'd lived to 24, but then she had to die, unfortunately. And, yes, anyway, these are just more illustrations of what I drew. And this liberated me entirely. I made the entire book to an extent, not a not fully finished, but as much as I could. And obviously I would have liked to have gone on Christmas stuff, Christmas presents and wrappings and everything else you could think of in general fantasy. I just drew for fun, which was quite different for me. Before it was relaxation, then it became fun. And as we go to the end of the book, really. Roses I was given, um, almost everything in my life. We got to the end, one more pun, it empty, and that. And all of this was such a liberation. And as I say, having gone to that, I thought, well, I can go on, I can draw anything now, and started to do so. And use other materials, other techniques, all the world opened up to me of things I could approach and tackle. And so I'm still doing to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm.